All right, welcome back to another episode and to December. I want to congratulate all of you who finished up No Yell November. Now please go and yell at all your children. No, that is not how it works, right? We're just trying to create good habits. Um, I actually did do prizes for everybody who completed the challenge and Mama's members and getting ready to ship those out. So I'm super excited about that. I am a big fan of prizes. Um, now that we are in December, we're not really going to start yelling at our kids. But next year in Mama's Members, I'm going to be working all year long to really help develop the habit of what else to do instead of yell at your kids. Because what I do not want you to do is just to shove that emotion down and then have it erupt in different ways or just in bigger explosions or things like that. But to really take the year to dive in, to learn some different skills of what to do instead, so that next year when No Yell November comes back around, that it's going to be a walk in the park. So, I'd love to have you guys join me with that. All right, now we are into December. Do you guys homeschool in December? Um, I have done different things where I've homeschooled through the holidays. This year, I plan on taking a few weeks off for Christmas. We also take the week of Thanksgiving off. And uh, back in my, I don't know, probably in August or September, I did an episode of my schedule for term one and it had a lot of downloads. And so I thought that it's probably helpful when I share ideas and in no way am I trying to say that this is the best schedule out there. This is a great schedule for my family and for how we do school and all of those things. So those of you who are on YouTube, I will be showing the books like Vanna White, right? Or A Price is Right Gal. Um, but I will also, those of you who are listening, I will just put a link in the show notes to my Amazon store so you can just see all the books that I am referring to. Um, okay, so we, like our school changes. It has changed so many times throughout the year, changes with how many children I'm teaching, all those types of things. And so... Right now, when we do school, we do a song and we sing a, uh, sing a prayer. What I meant to say is say a prayer, sing a song, say a prayer, and then we do memorization. And after that, we do read aloud. And that is all my Tessie girl wants to do with us. And then she goes and does her own things. My Joshua does not actually do any of the subjects with us. He is completely independent. And so after that, then I just have Brig and George. And Brigham is 10. George is four and George is welcome to stay or sometimes he goes off and plays or sometimes he just does his own thing. So for my group subject, I am, my group is sometimes just Briggy and a lot of times Georgie will come and do it with us. But our group subjects, I have been using the Mindful Heart and I have really, really enjoyed it. They have taken the philosophies of the well-educated heart and put it in a curriculum. And it's still very heart-based and just giving really good ideas and listen to this movie and do these books. And what I loved about it is that I have a tendency when I get ideas from places like The Well-Educated Heart where I think I need to buy all the books and where I think I need everything. And what I was doing was then overwhelming my children with like, you can read all these books and do all these things and they did not like that. So The Mindful Heart has been a really great resource for me to help kind of cipher through, is that the right word, decipher through, uh, all the great suggestions of the well-educated heart. Now sometimes I'll go into the well-educated heart and pull out books that may go along with it, but knowing that I just am going to pick one instead of doing the buffet style of all the books, it was, it was a little much. And my son said, please, can we go back to where we just pick books in the beginning? So he still helps me pick the books, um, but he likes just having one to read instead of a lot. So with our group subjects, we do rotate monthly with the mindful heart. And, but my Tess, her school schedule is a term. So her school schedule is a 12 week term. And then Brigham has some books that will go along with the monthly things that we're reading and studying and some books that will be term books. Um, and so our terms are 12 weeks. And at the end of the 12 weeks, we have Battle of the Brains, which we had right before Thanksgiving and my sweet girl one tested. And then we take a week off at the end of the term. So Thanksgiving, I always make sure that that is the week that we take off. Um, it's super nice for me to have this little break, time for me to get stuff ready for the next term, and it also gives my kids a nice break and just to have some fun. So now I'm just going to kind of go for it and go through some of the books that we have. So that's kind of our group subject is the mindful heart. So now I'm going to go through some of, uh, well, all of the things that my test is doing. 
And like I said, this will be in my Amazon, the link I'll have so you can see all the books and whatnot on Amazon. So language arts, Tess is still doing daily grams and she has really enjoyed that. It is basically five questions with language arts and it's short and sim simple and to the point. And instead of these long drawn out lessons that the kids aren't really involved in much anyway, this one's much more short and to the point. Literature. She wanted to read, and as I hold this book up, it's blanking, you can't really even see anything, but Beowulf. So she was very curious. She goes, I've heard people talk about it before, so I would really like to read it. In all honesty, I have not read it, so I don't really know much about it, but apparently somebody's been talking about it in some homeschool circle, and so it has intrigued her. For scripture, she is still reading the New Testament. And math, I did not grab her math book, um, but it, like I said, it'll be linked. The math book she has been loving is Learn Math Fast. And it's just, I love it. The idea with math for me is the more I study well-educated heart philosophy and just the more I study about education, it's so interesting because we take reading, right? And we keep it simple and we're like, here, here's the alphabet. And then all these letters, they make sounds. And we put these sounds together and it makes words. So now when I pick up a book, I can just read through things. And I don't have to really think and sound it out. So why not have that same philosophy with math and keeping math really simple so that we can just see two plus two, four, five plus seven, 12. And I don't even have to think that I have the four basic types of math um, down, adding, subtracting, timesing, dividing, right? That I just know those forward and backwards so that when math gets more complicated, I don't have to think. Um, so I, I love that kind of idea with math. So Tess, we do... We mix things up and we do some flashcards to just help make sure that she knows her math facts and then she is enjoying learning math fast. Um, part of her homework, schoolwork, I guess, is speech and debate and she has really enjoyed that. They have online options now. So if you are not in Utah or Arizona, um, you can do online and my kids have really enjoyed debate. That has been fun. My oldest, not oldest, my oldest homeschooler, I should say, he is in debate as well. And it has been so fun to watch him get excited to write papers where before he's like, writing is stupid, right? And now all of a sudden it has a purpose and a reason and he is on fire with it. It's been really fun. Okay, so her biography is Richard the Lionheart. Once again, I grabbed a book without um, a cover on it. So we have Richard the Lionheart and written by Gillingham. Um, I did not read that one, but my older son, Porter, he had read that one. He was really intrigued by Richard Lionheart. For history, she is reading the Magna Carta, and this is from Beautiful Feet Books, is that we got this one. So that's the Magna Carta that she's doing for history. For science, oh, I don't have the book with me because it's on Kindle, and it is Galen. That's funny, I didn't even write down the whole thing, but Galen was... I hope I'm going to say this right, really the father of a lot of stuff with anatomy. And I hope I'm saying this correctly because I have read this. Uh, he would, I think there was a law where it was unethical to cut open a dead body and examine it at his time. And so he would take gladiators who would get cut open or get hurt. And so that he could kind of start seeing how the body worked and all those types of things. So that sounds a little graphic, but the book is not graphic at all. So she's going to do that. Religion. She's going with a big one from C.S. Lewis. We're big fans of C.S. Lewis for religious books. Um, she's going to do the screw tape letters. I don't know if you've read the screw tape letters, but it's a little dark. She says she's ready for it. And then for finance and politics and economics, we kind of rotate through those different books. She is reading Animal Farm by George Orwell. So if you have not picked that one up, it is a great one. Um, it's actually a quick read but a really, really poignant one. And for character, her character book is going to be, oh, it's big, Jordan B. Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. So that will be Tessa's schedule. She has piano mixed in there, um, and that will be what she will do. And she has the 12 weeks to do it. We do school Monday through Thursday. But if you do not finish, you do not come to my pizza party. So she had drug her feet a little bit last term, and she stayed up till midnight the night before Battle of the Brains to finish one of her books from last term so that she could come to my pizza party because apparently I threw the best pizza parties. So that was fun. Um, so that's kind of how I work it that way to make it exciting to finish your books, 
versus forcing them to read all their books. Like if you don't read your book, fantastic. Uh, like I really don't care. If you do read your book, you get pizza and I love it. I love to give them a prize instead. So Briggy, uh, like I said, some of his books are for a term but most of them are for a month. So I will tell you which ones are which. So for language arts with him, I have been mixing it up with a lot of different things. The Mind of the Heart um, has some suggestions with language arts of writing a story or reading this little literature thing. I also still use lessons from first language lessons. And even though Brigham would be, let me think, I believe fifth grade, First language lessons is actually geared toward first and second grade and I have just spaced it out and made it fun and we mix up things with Mad Libs and all sorts of fun stuff like that to just give language arts a reason and a purpose because he has not enjoyed those at all. So just kind of helping him with that. Okay, so his literature book, he will have the three, the full term. I thought I grabbed it. Oh, I guess I did not grab it. Oh, and I don't know who wrote it. So sorry, it's still sitting in my bookcase. Freckles. Freckles is a fantastic, fantastic book. And I'm so excited for him to read that. I loved it. All my kids who have read it have loved it. So um, that'll be a ton of fun. So his scriptures, that's just always, and he's decided to read the Book of Mormon. For math, we have, he was doing Saxon. And... He was starting to do hate math, and so we were mixing things up, just like I always do. And so we are doing things like Life of Fred, and getting really good at flashcards, and playing games, and just having a lot of fun with math, and helping him to see that math is fun, it's not hard, all those types of things. Science. Okay, this is fun. I, I'm biased, obviously, but I found this beautiful book. Oh, I have such a book problem, but this is so pretty. The book is a beautiful hard-covered book um, and it's called Star Stories, Constellation Tales from Around the World. So this book, um, let's see, by Andy Wilkes and Anita Ganeri, something like that. But it tells stories of the stars from around the world. So Brigham likes stars and all those types of things in their stories. So it has fantastic illustrations, which are always a ton of fun. And then we'll tell you the different stories of um, the Big Dipper. How Fisher Brought Summer, and just where it came from, and different stories that come from that. So I'm excited for him to read that one. And this one will be just one month he'll have to read that book. Biography is, he is doing, we have two books, because he's kid number six, so I have lots of books. Um, he is doing Along King Galileo by Jeannie Bendick. That's a great one. And then another one, Starry Messenger, about Peter Sis. So he'll read both of those. And then I just grabbed, I thought it would be fun to just grab a couple science books that I'll just leave out. Well, I didn't grab them, I already had these ones. So one is Questions and Answers to Stars and Planets. So that one will just be fun that he can kind of peek through it. And I leave books out like that for my kids to just kind of grab. And another one I really like is Astronomy for Every Kid. And this is by Janice Van Cleves. And it is 101 Easy Experiments That Really Work. So if we want to, for science one day, just kind of mix that up and do one of those fun experiments. So his stars in his biography book will be one month. Okay, so for Mindful Heart for December, and I actually have my Mindful Heart stuff here with me, so that's what that looks like for him. Um, but they're going through Christmas, Joy to the World, and kind of studying about Christmas all over the world. So I got found this awesome book for Brigham. It is called Christmas is Coming traditions from around the world. And once again, a beautiful book, hardcover, um, great illustrations. Um, so just different, oh, Germany, what are some of their traditions for Christmas? Um, a mysterious light, just different things, awesome pictures throughout the book of just different poinsettias. There's Spain, um, Greece, so just what people believe and practice all around the world. So that will also be just for the month of December. Then Brigham does handwriting and he does handwriting without tears. We really liked that. Um, typing, he rotates through doing a game a couple days a week and an actual typing lesson plan. And then he also, I have him read a character book. Um, a hero book is actually what we call it. So I've liked Christian Heroes Then and Now. And he's this time is reading George Mueller by Janet and Jeff Benj. 
And that's a really great one. George Mueller had so much faith. It's a fascinating book. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that we'll be doing. Yes. Um, with our group stuff, one of our composers will be learning is about Handel. So we will probably listen to the Messiah, um, kind of study a little bit about him. But I love getting to know the world's greatest composers. These little books are silly and fun. And my kids know so much about composers because they like to look at these books because they'll have funny pictures and comics about it, but actually tell the whole story about who these people are and were. So that is our schedule for Tess and Brig. Then Georgie, I kind of just am doing the same thing throughout the year where we are working on phonics and flashcards. We play tiny polka dot math. Um, we work on handwriting. He's doing handwriting with without tears. He's starting to do explode the code and just really letting him navigate those types of things. So he's been on those same books for a while and we'll just probably keep chipping away at him because some days he's way into it and wants to do a whole page and some days he finds it difficult to write a letter. So we do one letter and we call it good and we just keep it lighthearted and fun. So that is our term two. I do try to keep on my Amazon list my schedule current so that as Brigham rotates through different months that I am also rotating and changing those on my Amazon list on in my Instagram it says my schedule and you can see what books we were studying so that you can always see kind